is diabetes an incurable disease, type 2 diabetes? Uh, should it get worse all the time as it usually does or is that a symptom? Is that, is that because we're treating it totally wrong or not even treating it at all? Uh, that's what I'm going to talk about with my guest today. I'm Andreas Enfeld from dietdoctor.com and I'm here with Dr. Jason Fang, a Hi, nephrologist Andrew. from Canada. Welcome. Oh, thanks very much. So I just uh, watched a, 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 a presentation by you. I thought it was really fantastic. You're, Thank you. Uh, it was about um, how we treat diabetics today in, in the medical system. And, and you are a nephrologist. You meet, you meet uh, diabetics uh, when, they're, when they've had their disease for a long time and they're really right. sick, right? Yeah, so I treat people on dialysis. Uh, that's a lot of what I do. And it's very disheartening to, because what happens is that when they develop their disease, they're so sick. But the diabetes itself is actually quite reversible. And that's one of the things that I realized a short while ago. And that's what needs to be understood is that this is not a disease that needs to progress. But we often tell people so the, that it's a chronic progressive disease. And that's not simply me talking, but if you go to the diabetes associations, uh, whether it's the American Diabetes Association or the Diabetes Australia, they all put out there that this is a chronic disease. And they tell people essentially that you have diabetes, you'll have it for the rest of your life, you might as well get used to it. But the problem is that that's simply not true. And it's actually pretty easy to, to prove it because if somebody came up to me and said, I've had diabetes, I was told I had diabetes, I watched my diet, I lost 50 pounds, I cut my carbs, I cut my sugar, and now they took me off of my medication, I'm fine now. That's obviously true. Nobody would say, oh, you're lying, right? So that patient who has lost the weight, who has changed their diet, has increased their exercise, for instance, their diabetes actually got better. And the thing is that if that patient got better, what happens to this idea that this is a chronic progressive disease? Well, obviously it's not true. Because any time that happens, every time it happens, it means that the disease is actually reversible. But you have to know how to reverse it. If you don't know how to reverse it, then you're just going to get worse. And the thing is that the drugs don't actually do anything for the disease. And this is also not controversial because the thing is that type 2 diabetes is a disease of too much insulin resistance. And that's not controversial. Everybody acknowledges that, right? So if you have very high insulin resistance, it's going to cause high blood sugar, right? But that's the symptom of the disease. The disease is actually too much insulin resistance. So the treatments that we give are all targeted at blood sugar. Right? That doesn't make any sense because it's almost like to give an analogy. If you have an infection, if you have a leg infection, well, you need to treat that infection. So what was causing it was bacteria. You give antibiotics. But that infection can give you a fever. But that fever is not the disease. If you start treating that fever as if it is the disease, then that leg wound is going to fester. Because you're treating the symptoms of the disease and ignoring the disease. But that's what we've done with type 2 diabetes. We're treating the blood sugar, but it's not, a, it's not a disease of the blood sugar. It's a disease of too much insulin resistance. So what happens is that because we're not treating the disease, the disease tends to progress. So if you look at what happens over a period of 10 years, 15 years, what happens is that you start off with one medication, then you take two medications, then three, then you take insulin, then more insulin, and more insulin. And after 10 years, you started with one medication, now you're on 100 units of insulin a day. Well, you're taking more medication to do the same job, to keep that blood sugar the same. That means your diabetes is worse. Even if your blood sugar is better, your diabetes is worse than it's ever been. Because you've never actually done anything about treating the insulin resistance. So that patient who went and lost weight and exercised and cut out the carbs and cut out the sugars, they actually reversed their insulin resistance and therefore their sugars came down. 
which is far different than making your blood sugars go down by force, by medication, and ignoring the actual disease. So that's the fundamental mistake that we've made over this last 20, 30, 40 years, right? We've treated the disease of type 2 diabetes, which is too much insulin, as if it was type 1 diabetes, which is too little insulin. So you got to understand that type 1 diabetes has too little insulin. So that makes sense. You should give them insulin. Type 2 diabetes is too much insulin. You need to reduce their insulin. But instead, we're giving more insulin to a disease state that has too much insulin. Well, of course, Which that's not going to work. That's crazy. And you had an analogy there as well uh, uh, in, in your talk. You were saying it's like... That would be like treating an alcoholic with a... Exactly. So if you have a, a disease such as alcoholism where it's characterized by too much alcohol, the very last thing you want to do is give more alcohol. And that seems very obvious, right? But if you look in the short term, as you take away the alcohol, they might get the shakes. They might get delirium tremens. If you give them alcohol, they will feel better in the short term, right? But that doesn't mean you're going to make the alcoholism better, right? That's the real problem, is the alcoholism. You can't treat the short-term thing at the expense of the long-term. What we've done is treat the short-term. We said, wow, your blood sugar is high, let me get it down, right? But it's like, well, what's happening to the disease? Who cares what's happening to the blood sugar? What's happening to the disease? It continues to get worse. So it's just like that alcohol, too much alcohol. The disease is too much alcohol. The cure cannot be to give more alcohol. Right. right. So That's to be clear, crazy. giving insulin to right. the a common is type 2 diabetic is like giving alcohol to an al alcoholic. Exactly. Exactly. So and the disease insane. is too much. It's insane. In fact, it's not simply that it's not treating it. It's going to actually make it worse, just like giving that alcohol. You have a disease which is characterized by too much insulin. You're giving more insulin. You're not making it better. You're actually right. making it worse. So the patient will look, gain weight and they will, their insulin resistance will get worse. Exactly. And, yeah. and the, the funny part is that the patients all know this. Because this is what happens, and I talk to a lot of patients, and they say, they go to their doctor, they start insulin, then they gain 15 pounds, 20 pounds, right? Which is, we, we all know that happened. That's not a secret, because insulin is what really drives weight gain. So what happens is that they take the insulin, they gain weight, and they go back to the doctor and say, Doc, what's this? You tell me I need to lose weight to get better. Then you go and give me a medication that makes me gain 20 pounds. This is not good. And the doctor always says something like, well, what are you going to do? You need to take the insulin, go exercise, right? But the problem is that it was not the lack of exercise that made them gain weight. It was the insulin that made them gain weight. So you need to treat that. You need to reduce it. So what do you do? What do you do if you're a type 2 diabetic? Well, the thing is that it's a dietary disease, right? And if you're a type 2 diabetic, it's a dietary disease. It's a disease of essentially too much sugar. So if you understand it like that, then the answer is to get that sugar out. Get it down. So the first thing you need to do is cut out all the sugar, cut out a lot of these refined carbohydrates, which are just sugar. So the breads and the pastas, right? So they're all chains of sugar. That's all carbohydrates are, chains of sugar. As you eat them, they get broken down into sugar. So if you have too much sugar, if diabetes is essentially too much sugar, you got to stop taking sugar. Otherwise, you're going to make it worse. So that's probably the first thing. You can do more exercise, try and burn it off. And the other thing that you can do is try to do something more extreme, such as fasting, for instance. You it's can actually More extreme that. than a strict low-carb diet. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fasting. Tell me more about it. So fasting is actually the most efficient and the most effective way to lower insulin. There's really no drug that does it. There are actually two, but they're not very effective to lower insulin. But if you understand that the disease is too much sugar, too much insulin, then you got to say, well, if it's too much sugar, too much insulin, let's get rid of the sugar, let's get the insulin down. How am I going to do that, right? So the thing about the sugar, you can go on a very low-carb diet, a ketogenic diet, and that will get your sugars down. But it doesn't necessarily get your insulin down because the proteins and the fats still raise insulin. Not to the same degree that carbohydrates do, but they still raise insulin. So you can get that sugar down, but you won't get that insulin down. So you can actually put people on various periods of fasting because you're not taking anything 
uh, it's, it's not simply low carb, it's low protein and low fat, right? It's nothing, nothing at all. So think about what's going to happen here. The body is not going to have anything coming in. So what is going to happen is it's going to start burning that sugar. And that's perfect. That's exactly what we want it to do. It starts burning sugar, burning sugar. After it burns the sugars, your sugars come down. You don't have to take medications. You don't have to take insulin. After that, it starts burning fat. And that's perfect. That's exactly what we want to do. And there's always two questions that come up when you talk about fasting. One, can I do it? And the thing is you have to understand is that literally billions of people around the world fast on a regular basis through their entire lives, right? So the Muslims, the Hindus, the Buddhists, the Catholics, almost every major religion in the world prescribes fasting. Not because it's super harmful, because it's very beneficial. And what, they, what happens during the fast is that your insulin levels go down. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. But, so what we're doing is we're burning off all that sugar and getting it out of the system. Right? As opposed to just getting it out of the blood, we're actually getting it out of the entire body. So the fasting does both things. It lowers the insulin and it lowers uh, the sugars. The other thing that always uh, comes up uh, with fasting is, is it harmful? And this is what always comes up. Am I going to go into starvation mode? And what's interesting when you look at fasting is that studies of fasting show the exact opposite. You don't have less energy, you have more energy. So there are certain things that get activated when you're fasting. So growth hormone goes up, for instance, to preserve lean muscle. Then you'd start burning just fat. Adrenaline goes up to give you more energy. And you're fueling all that energy with fat because you can measure free fatty acids in the blood and they go up. So what's happening is that you're burning fat, you're preserving your muscle, and you've got plenty of energy. Perfect. That is like the perfect treatment.